Hi everybody, everybody I'm back. And today, today Judy Young is gonna show you all how to make a really quick and simple baked chicken recipe. This recipe is so easy. It's a lot of fun to make and listen here, it tastes so good. I'm gonna show you all how to make this. This recipe has been in my family for years and years. And I make this recipe at least twice, I wanna say maybe twice a month. My family cannot go without it. When there's days that we can't figure out what to eat, we'll all look at each other and say, baked chicken. I'll get those ingredients out. I wash my chicken really good, put that bad boy in the oven, and listen here, you can go sit down and relax because the spices, the way we wash our chicken, the spices in the oven will do the rest. You don't have to slave over a hot stove with oil. You just throw it in the oven. Here's what you're gonna need to make Jeannie Young's baked chicken. Now, before I show you the ingredients, if you are not a fan of chicken thighs, you can use any part of the chicken that you like. If you like the breast, if you like the wings or the legs, whatever part you like will work with this recipe as well. Here's what you'll need. Okay, so the ingredients that we have, we have one green bell pepper, as well as a half of onion. If you wanted to use the different colored peppers, you absolutely can. We're gonna use a little bit of this jalapeno. You don't have to use jalapeno. You can omit it. You can omit it from the whole recipe if you're not a fan of hot things. Me personally, and those of you that know me, you know that I'm really not a fan of hot stuff. But what I do do when I use a jalapeno is I take the white ribs out of the inside and I take the seeds out and that gives you a nice mild flavor. Not so hot where it's gonna burn your pants off, okay? Just enough to tickle the back of the throat with the heat, okay? So then, you will need sazon. Those of you that are familiar with me, you know that I love to use sazon, especially, especially on chicken. It gives it a nice, beautiful color, and it tastes absolutely amazing. You will need one clove of fresh garlic. This right here, you would never guess what this is. This right here, you never guess what it is. So I'm gonna show you. Oriental chicken flavor seasoning pack. This comes out of the Oriental ramen noodle package. Now, some of you might say, but Gina, I know you're not gonna sit there and waste noodles. No, I'm not gonna waste the noodles. I always save my noodles, okay? When I make this dish, I save the noodles and I use the noodles when I want some nice lo mein. When I wanna whip up some lo mein, I'll have those noodles right with me in a Ziploc bag, ready to go in my cabinet. All right, so this right here is three packets of the Oriental flavor. Now, some of you might say, have you done it with other flavors? I've done it with chicken, and I've done it with the shrimp flavor, but the flavor that I like and the flavor that I find works the best on my chicken has always been the Oriental. So I always use three packs of the Oriental, just put it in there. All right, you're gonna need a little bit of chicken broth, as well as sea salt, parsley flakes, cracked black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and of course, we'll need some chicken seasoning. Now, let's work our way over here to our sink. And I don't have a lemon or a lime with me today, but I do have lime juice. So we're gonna use lime juice in the same manner that I would to clean my chicken. If you have a lime or a lemon, you just cut your lime or lemon in half and you rub it all over your chicken this way to get your chicken nice and clean, okay? You, so when you're cleaning your meats, you wanna use one whole lemon or one whole lime. And if you don't have that, you can always use vinegar. We're also gonna use some sea salt and the sea salt serves as an abrasive. Does it make your chicken salty? No, it doesn't. Let's go ahead and put some salt in there. What it does is it helps to scrub off all of the unwanted gook off of the chicken. When you're washing your chicken, you wanna use cold water only. You never wanna use warm water and you don't wanna use hot water, all right? 
Make sure that your sink is impeccably clean. Make sure that your hands are clean. And I'm gonna show you all how to clean some chicken. Let's turn this on, cold water. And you wanna go in and give it a nice wash. Just like this. You want to rub your chicken together. And like I said, that salt serves as an abrasive. All right, and it helps to scrub off all the unwanted stuff, okay? This is cold water that's streaming into the chicken. All right. We're gonna give it a rinse several times, okay? And make sure when you're done cleaning your chicken, you take the time out to clean your sink off again and clean the handles of your sink off as well. Make sure. I'm just draining some of the water. Now I'm gonna wash my hands because anytime that you're dealing with raw meat, you always wanna wash your hands so that you don't transfer bacteria. The reason why I'm gonna wash my hands is because I wanna grab that lime juice and I need to squeeze some lime juice onto our chicken. And I don't want to transfer bacteria onto the lime juice. Okay, everybody, I've washed my hands. Now I can grab the lime juice. All right, pour you some lime juice on there. Not only does the lime or lemon juice get your meat nice and clean, it also gives it a great taste. When people, listen here, trust me when I tell you this, when people taste my meat, they say, oh my goodness, like what did you do? And honestly, it's the way you clean the meats. You have to clean the meats in such a manner. You know, you have to get those meats nice and clean. We're going to take the skin off and any unwanted fat okay so we have this cutting board here and i'm going to show you how to do that we have kitchen shears and we're going to cut off all of the unwanted fat and then we're going to wash this chicken again okay but i'm just going to show you how to do one cut off all of the unwanted fat some will be white, some will be yellow. You don't want to digest it, get rid of it. And the best way would be using kitchen shears or a knife. And the skin, it comes right off. This recipe here does not require the skin to be left on. I don't suggest that you leave the skin on for this recipe. There's plenty of other recipes that I have that requires for the skin to be left on, but not this one. All right, so you want to take off all of this fat all of the skin. This is how clean your chicken should look. Check me out, guys. You see that there? Beautiful, nice, clean chicken. And you wanna even come through this way. Come through this way and get all that off of there. Much as you can. All right? Just like so. Let's double back and look at this side. And I see there's some fat there that we don't want. Just cut it right off. This right here is what you call one nice, nicely clean chicken thigh. This is what it should look like. See that? Beautiful. I'm gonna get that fat out of there. All of that's unwanted. There it goes, beautiful. And then we're going to give our chicken a nice wash. Once again, remember we poured the lemon juice on it. You want to rinse it maybe one or two more times. Now I'm going to put the video on pause so that I can continue to clean the rest of my chickens and to take the skin off. All right. And I'll be back after I finish cleaning them. Okay, everybody, I'm back. I've cleaned my chicken. And after cleaning the chicken and taking all of the skin off, I clean my sink. I clean the handles of my sink and wash my hands. I like to use a bleach solution for my sink. Now let's take a peek in 
at our chicken here. Our chicken is nice and clean, and I have it on the bottom half because anytime I'm getting ready to season some uh, our chicken or whatever meat I'm gonna cook, I always use the bottom half first, and then I flip it over and do the top side so the top side can stay nice and pretty with the seasonings on it, if that makes any sense. Okay, everybody, so I have, mil well, I was gonna say millions, but I have thousands and thousands of people that message me every time I make chicken and they say, Gina, you are not supposed to be washing your chicken. Listen here, honey, as long as I'm living, as long as Gina Young is living, I'm gonna wash my chicken, honey. You hear me? Absolutely I am. And then some people say, well, the USDA says you're not supposed to wash it. I'm gonna wash my chicken. <laughs> And if you all want to live a good, nice, healthy life, you make sure you wash your chicken too. You hear me? <laughs> Absolutely you should. I'm going to continue to wash my chicken. I don't care who says don't wash it. Let's go ahead and start seasoning. Now, let's use our Oriental seasoning, just like so. It gives it such a great flavor. You all have never tasted anything until you've done this. And the way that I came up with this one day, like I said, years and years ago, I started doing this. The way I came up with this is I believe I went to make some chicken. And I didn't have hardly any ingredients. I didn't have all of the spices that I wanted. I broke open a pack of this seasoning and it was history my family adored the recipe they loved the chicken they rant and they raved over the chicken and i thought oh, i've got something here your girl has done something here you know and everybody's like what did you do what did you use and i never told anybody but it's out now the ramen noodle seasoning is absolutely amazing on chicken. Trust me. You're going to use some sea salt. Don't get crazy with the sea salt because honestly, listen here, you don't need a lot. Just a little bit will go a long way. Trust me when I tell you this, okay? And we're going to season both sides. We're going to put a little bit of chicken seasoning in. Here's the thing. When I tell you all a little bit, really just a little bit, just a little bit is all you're going to need for this. All right, just to give you that flavor. All right. Garlic powder and onion powder. I hope that you all are having a great work week, a great day as well. This right here is onion powder. Gotta have garlic and onion powder. It makes everything taste amazing. We're gonna put some cracked black pepper on there. Use cracked black pepper. It has antioxidants in it, and it makes everything taste better. Absolutely it does. It really enhances the flavor of the meat. And parsley. I put parsley on everything because it makes it nice and beautiful. But does the parsley give it flavor? No, it doesn't. It's not going to give it flavor, but it's going to make it nice and beautiful, and I like to eat with my eyes first. Really, I do. Okay, so that's our seasoning. Let me grab something so that I can flip the chicken over and we can season the other half. Okay, flip your chicken. Oh my word, not before. Wait, Gina, wait, Gina. You gotta put your sazon on. Oh yeah, I can't forget my sazon. I knew I was missing something. I was missing that orange tint, this beautiful flavor from the sazon. You gotta have you some. Gotta have you some. All right, now we can flip it over with our fork. And then we're gonna season the other side. And then we're gonna put our peppers right down into here. All right, look at this. Ooh, girl, don't hurt them. I'm not. Don't hurt them, Gina. I'm not. Relax. <laughs> All right, season the other side. Same seasonings. Make it nice and beautiful. Ooh, chicken, I can't wait to eat this chicken. My word, we're gonna have a little bit of stuffing on the side, and it's just stovetop stuffing. 
And then we're also gonna have some green beans as well. And that's dinner for tonight. That is dinner for tonight. And this isn't gonna take me any time. Like I said, you just throw this together and put that in the oven and you are set. Onion powder, garlic powder. I'm not gonna put the chicken seasoning on the top. You don't need it on the top. All right, a little tiny bit of sea salt. Don't get crazy with it. You already put some earlier. That right there is enough, that's enough. All right, says on. Oh yeah, baby. Hooey, I'm excited for this chicken. Mm, mm, mm. Who doesn't love baked chicken? I know I do. You know, sometimes you don't want the heavy weight down fried chicken with that thick crust from flour. You know, sometimes you just don't feel like that. You just want something that's gonna be nice and healthy. You bake it in the oven. You don't have to slave over the stove. There's that. Now, let's go ahead, chop up our beautiful veggies. If you wanna chop it up big, you can. If you wanna do slices, you can. However you want. If you wanna chop it up really fine, absolutely you can. I'm just gonna do mine's kinda medium because I like to taste the vegetables. I like to taste the onions and the bell peppers. Absolutely I do. And put them in here. You can put them up under the chicken. You can throw them on top. Whatever you do would be just fine. Make sure that you have your oven preheated to 375 degrees if you haven't done so. In this manner. Oh, and these are just gonna kinda cook down into Flavor Town, you hear me? They are gonna cook down and put so much flavor into your dish. Now, if there's people out there that are not fans of onion or pepper, you don't have to use the onion or pepper, and it's still gonna be good, because you can use carrot. You can use carrot and celery if you want it. Let's go ahead and crack into this. Um, this is my garlic. You wanna give it a nice chop just like so. This right here is gonna give you some flavor, robust flavor. Oh yeah. And you just put it down in there. The flavor's gonna go all throughout. This here I'm gonna use just a little bit, just a little bit. And I don't have any of the seeds and I don't have any of the ribs, so I'm just gonna do just a little. Like I said, you don't have to use this if you didn't want to. Going right on in, you season that chicken up. You season that chicken up. Put a little tiny bit, just a little bit of heat onto that chicken. Now watch this. I'm gonna lift some of the pieces up and let some of the veggies go underneath. And I'm gonna let some of the veggies stay right on top. All right, we're gonna put a little bit of chicken broth down into our pan. This goes in the oven uncovered, uncovered. Don't cover this up, okay? If you cover it up, it'll just steam and it won't turn out right, all right? So I have some chicken broth. You can use vegetable stock if you want it to. Don't pour this chicken broth right on top of your chicken because what will happen, trust me when I tell you this, you'll rinse all of those beautiful spices away. Okay, and I'm just putting a little bit in there, just a little bit because that little bit of chicken broth will mix with the beautiful chicken juice that comes out of the chicken as it's baking. This is going in the oven 375 degrees. When it comes out, I'll let you know how long it took to cook. We'll say a nice prayer over our chicken. We'll give it a taste. I'm going to let you all know what it tastes like. Be back. Okay, everybody, our chicken is done. Our chicken has cooked for 45 minutes to perfection. Let's get this chicken out of the oven. Let's say a quick prayer real quick before we dive into this beautiful chicken. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding. I thank you, Jesus, for feeding us. I thank you for the roof over our head, the food that you feed us, and the love that you give us daily. I pray that no weapons formed against us shall prosper. We bind the devil away from every area of our life. 
Devil, you have no authority. Devil, you have no authority over this household. Jesus, I invite you into my home. Jesus, I invite your angels into my home. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I thank you for the relationship that we have together. I thank you for your mercy. Please forgive me for my sins. Had mercy on me and help me to have mercy on others. Lord, I can't do anything in life without you. And I thank you for this gift that you've given me. I thank you for the gift that you've given me to show people how to cook. I thank you too for the platform that I can show everyone my recipes and how to cook. God bless this meal. Once again, amen. Okay, everybody, let me show you the food. Our food is done. Let's come down onto the pitcher. And I don't think I'm gonna make a plate today. The reason why is because I have family members here. Everyone's ready to eat. I have mouths over here watering and waiting for plates to be made. So I'm just gonna give you all a visual of what everything looks like. This chicken can be made so easily, 375, 375 degrees. Look at this. Look at this beautifulness. Let's bring a light a little bit closer so I have some macaroni, or I have some green beans here. Beautiful green beans. I have cheesy, cheesy baby, cheesy all gratin potatoes. Look at those bad boys. Look at those bad boys right there, right there, right there. Hooey! Girl, you're gonna hurt them. Mm, mm, mm. Lord, we thank you for this chicken. My goodness, look at this. Hooey! This is what this is what your chicken should look like. Let me use the plate. See that right there? That's what your chicken should look like. Nice and beautiful, golden brown on the top. Let me show you underneath. Nice and juicy. Do you see that? This right here is packed with flavor. My goodness. Hoo-wee. Mm, mm, mm. And let me show you one thing. Let's come down onto the camera or onto the food. This right here, look at the juice that the chicken is sitting in. Remember we put that chicken broth in there and also that's the juice from the chicken. Keep all of that goodness in your pan. It's so much flavor and it helps to keep your chicken nice and juicy. If you all enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And it smells so good in here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if y'all enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so that you, so that you can be notified every time, every time Gina Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you all for watching. Good night.